you don't have to tell the White Sox about the intensity of Jake Peavy. Peavy called the South Side of Chicago home for five seasons and was an All Star for the Sox in 2012. Now the veteran right-hander is part of San Francisco's rotation, and just like the Giants, he's searching for a win. Peavy takes on his former team next. fans here in San Francisco they love day baseball and that's what we've got and this is the final game of this short two game series White Sox and Giants. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well the Giants have lost five straight. Last night's game was tough. They came back late only to lose uh, in the 10th inning and Mike uh, this is a big start for Jake Peavy for a lot of reasons. One. The Giants need a win, and two, he would like to get a win for crying out loud. Well, he hasn't had a win since April, and he's been pitching way too good not to have any wins. Twelve losses in a row, now that's a personal high. And for the guy that won the 2007 Cy Young Award, he is accustomed to winning. Now he's going to face his old teammates today. He has lots of motivation and whatnot, but the Giants, they need to start thinking that good things are going to happen. They've had a lot of bad things go their way. Today is start to think about the good things, and it starts with Jake Peavy. He'll deal today. Yeah, what did Dusty Baker used to say? Think lucky. Think lucky and we're going to think lucky too. Stay tuned. We'll take you to our Comcast Sportsnet studios for an update and we'll do that right after this.
Votto pitched to the left-hand batter. He drives one down the right field line, headed for the wall, it's gone! Gary Kuiper just hit his first major league home run. How about that? Hey, look at Dwayne Mundo's bases. Oh, is he one happy ball player? Look at Buddy Bell waiting for him. Dwayne Kuiper just hit his first big league homer. Well, that was, of course, our beloved Dwayne Kuyper's one and only major league home run. It was called by Joe Tate back on August 29th, 1977. It was Monday Night Baseball. And now Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area wants to hear your call on Kuyper's shot. Here are the rules. If you want to be a broadcaster, just record yourself, post it on Instagram, and add the hashtag call Kuyper's shot. Best entry gets two tickets to the August 29th game, of course, the anniversary of Dwayne's home run, versus the Brewers, and a signed Dwayne Bobblehead and a chance to meet Crook and Kipe. That sounds pretty awesome. Hey, welcome back to the broadcast. Now, the pitcher that gave up that home run to Dwayne, it was Steve Stone, and he's actually here in the park today. He's part of Chicago's broadcast team. He'll be making some calls, I'm sure. Now, we've received so many entries. We want to give you a look at some that we think are the best so far. Take a look. Wayne steps in tonight, and Winfield takes an extra couple steps in. Stone rocks. Kai hits it hard. He hits it deep. He's out of here. Bo cheats into that one. It's good nobody's in the stands tonight, or else someone might have gotten hurt. Dwayne Kuyper steps in. Not a career home run. Down and given the signs. Stone on the rubber with the pitch. Crack. Deep to right. Prove me wrong, Dwayne Kuyper. Norm Hagen looking up. Here Stone's pitch to the line, hitting second baseman, Will Kuyper, swimming, hit high, can't hit it deep, and it's going to tip, back goes Will Hagen, that baby's out of here, touch him all, Dwayne grabs him, finally, catches, take it deep, for his first major league home run. Those are awesome, but we want to see a whole lot more come our way. The contest ends Friday, folks. All right, game two set to start shortly between the Giants and the White Sox. Jake Peavy's on the mound for the Giants, and fans are hoping Dwayne Kuyper makes a whole lot of home run calls today. Mike and Dwayne will be back after these messages with lineups and first pitch, so stay with us.
area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Right now at Jack in the Box, try Jack's Spicy Chicken Club Combo for just $4.99 plus tax. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability, and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. Day baseball here at AT AT&T Park. It's a beautiful day. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 67 degrees here. Winds at 8 miles per hour. Humidity at 65%. And we have scattered clouds. All right, let's take a look at the lineup that Jake Peavy will be facing. It'll be Diazza in the leadoff spot, followed by Beckham Abreu and then Adam Dunn. He hit home run last night. 458 in his career. Ramirez, Gillespie, and Flowers. Danks will hit eighth. And Quintana will pitch in bat night. On the hill today for the Giants will be Jake Peavy, the 33-year-old right-hander, his 12th year at the big league level, 6 195 pounders. This is what he has done with the Giants and the Red Sox combined one in 12 with a 4.73 ERA. That's right, he has lost 12 in a row. Hard to believe when you look at the numbers. Over a two-to-one strikeout walk ratio, he's going to see a low 90s fastball. He will sink. He will cut. He's got a changeup. He'll throw off that. Curveball slider, a lot of different types of movement for him. His key has always been knee high command. And let's take a look at the defense behind PV today, starting in the outfield. From left to right, it'll be Morse, Pagan, and Pence. Good arms across the board. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side. Panic and Duval on the right side. And Buster Posey will be in the squad, putting down the signs. And the first pitch of the ball game is wide. So we get started right on time at 1245. And at third is Sandoval. There's a strike. The home plate umpire Chris Siegel. Brackley Reynolds and Colbert from first to third. Siegel a young umpire. We've been impressed with him and what he'll do normally is start off a little tight but he will loosen up as you earn your corners. Very consistent zone, likes the low strike. This is a check swing roller right to Duvall. And that's how this game gets started. All right, time now for our Nissan Keys to the game. And how about win one for Peavy? That's right, 12 in a row on the losing side. Well, that's just not the way it's supposed to be. Not when he's been pitching well. They need to get him a win. And number two, contain Abreu. One of the big shots in the arm this year has been the rookie First baseman for the White Sox, Jose Abreu, 31 homers hit 300. They need to keep him in the yard. They need to contain him. Those are Nissan keys to the game. They did last night as he went 0 for 5. Here's Beckham. Beckham went 1 for 5 last night and it turned out to be the biggest hit of the game as he knocked in a run in the 10th inning. And it gave the White Sox a 3 2 win. Two balls and no strikes. PB has got some history against the White Sox. He faced them earlier this year when he was with Boston. Pitched well, had a no decision. There's a strike to Beckham. Beckham 0 for 3 lifetime. Diaz, by the way, was 0 for 6 lifetime against PB. Outfield straight away, the pitch. Swing and a foul back. It's two and two. Jose Abreu to follow. Just underway. Foul back again. Now the defense play that he made in the ninth inning really saved the game. Well, it's one of the best double plays we've ever seen, and it was the same comment that Bruce Bochy made given the circumstances. And not only did he have a great game with the glove, he had a great game with the bat. Three and two. This is high and foul. The ball over, but it's going to sail into the seat. About 25 rows back. 
kid brought his glove. He made a nice play. Sitting there with the old man, having fun at the yard. Nothing better. This one may be playable. And it's going to be Hunter Pence. All right, let's take a look at the fan that made a nice play. Oh, yeah, brought his glove. <laughs> Everybody's good. Listening to John Miller, KNBR. Great day at the yard. Here's Abreu, 0 for 5 last night. And the strike, and it's 0 and 1. Pretty impressive numbers for a guy in his first year in the league. And those you figure are only going to get better once he learns everybody. He's had two at bats against PV. He's 0 for 2. Two balls and one strike as PV runs that pitch inside. You, you watch PV and he's really animated. Abreu, when he swings the bat, it can go anywhere, line to line. Most of his power, like most everybody else, to his pull side, but he's got the ability to go line to line with power too. And that's rap foul two and two. Hasn't had too many 0 for fives in his young career at the big league level. Let's see how the Giants have to play him pretty much straight up. It's just respect. And now a full count as he bounces one low and away. Ryan Vogelsong ended up with a no decision. He pitched extremely well. Gave up two runs in the first, and that was it. And the walk. Take a look at the line for Ryan Vogelsong last night. Just five base runners, three hits, couple of walks. The big swing of the bat was a two run homer in the first inning. By Adam Dunn, but that was it. He shut the door. 105 efficient throws last night. And the Giants picked him up in the night and got him off the hook. He did get a no decision. Dunn at 221. He's a a guy that's got a good eye. He'll take pitches. He will strike out and he will hit home runs. And example of that last night. Yep. Hit a home run. Had a couple of RBIs. Struck out. And that's foul. He went left center field. Big part of the yard last night. You just don't see many hit out there by left handed hitters. Just an idea of the power he has. And if you want to call out a mistake, that's just about the only one that Vogel song made last yeah. night. Panic playing in shallow right field. Duvall holding on the runner, Abreu. And a late call strike, and it's one and two. So as far as on the list. In career home runs, he's number 35. He and David Ortiz, both active, are kind of going back and forth. One and two to Adam Dunn. And that'll end the inning. On a 92 mile an hour fastball. Pagan Pence Posey coming up.
Just like last night. It'll be Pagan, Pence, and Posey. Pablo Sandoval in the cleanup spot. You see his RBIs in August. Not bad. Morris is in the fifth spot. Then it's Duvall, Panic, and Crawford, and Peavy will hit nine. On the hill today for the White Sox will be the left hander Jose Quintana. 6'1, 220 pounder. He's in his third year at the big league level. Just started it actually. He's start number 25, 6 and 8 with a 3 0 4 ERA. As you mentioned, 24 starts, 21 of those starts, he has allowed three runs or less, and that puts him amongst the leaders in all of baseball in that category. How does he do it? You're going to see a low 90s fastball that's got natural cut. He'll also sink the fastball. He's got a changeup, curveball slider that he'll throw off those fastballs. But when he's right, you're going to see him use a lot of that inside corner to right handed hitters. And when he's right, you'll see a lot of broken bats and a lot of ground balls. Here's Pagan to lead it off. One for five last night. And for Pagan hitting 307. Only one hitter in this lineup during the regular season is Face Quintana, and that's Michael Moore. And a strike. Giants with that loss last night, and it was a tough loss, are now two games under 500 at home. They're 29 and 31. Sharply to Beckham. One out. Let's take a look at the defense that the White Sox will play behind Jose Quintana. Starting in the outfield from left to right will be Diaza, Danks, and Dunn. Ramirez and Gillespie on the left side of the infield. Beckham and Abreu on the right side. And Tyler Flowers will be in the squad putting down the signs. The best arm in the outfield is Diaza in left field. Here's Hunter Pence. Hunter had a triple in the first inning yesterday. After that, he had a tough time. He struck out three times after that. Buster Posey to follow. And that pitch is wide, and it's two and a half. You know, sometimes you go up there and say, well, I'm just going to take a strike and look what happens. Three and oh. Not a bad plan. First at bat, nobody on base. And taking all the way, and a call strike, three and one. Popped up shallow right field. Can Dunn get there? Yes, he can. Graceful, like a big old kitty cat. Since he's retired, and here's Buster Posey. I think he's having fun with the challenge. I mean, he's a DH. He, he might get four games a year where he plays the outfield, and he just so happens that he's playing the toughest right field in the National League. And we take a look at the graceful. Attempt to catch that ball with our Exmo. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer, and that is Adam Dunn. Oh, Kline, he pitched last week. No balls in one strike to Buster Posey. Buster one for five last night. Out of play, nothing in two. Posey inside out in the ball and it's not a bad idea to think right center field gap and stay with that inside out of approach against Quintana. This natural fastball is going to bore in on a, on a righty. Up the middle to Alexi Ramirez. And that'll end the inning. So two ground balls and a pop up and we'll head to the second. Nothing nothing.
is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. No score as we head to the second inning. Alexi Ramirez is going to lead things off. Ramirez, Gillespie, and Flowers. They've seen Jake Peavy, who issued a walk in the first inning. And he gets away with a hanger and the snowballs in one strike. Sometimes a hanger could be a great pitch. That's really not something you look for. Up the middle. Panic to his right. Time for AT&T Uber's Rewind, September 27, 2011. Rockies take it on the Giants, and that's when Connor Gillespie hit an inside the park home run. And oh, by the way, it was home run number one in his career. Whip, 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 whip. Keep it going. Safe, and that's our AT&T Uber's Rewind. Well, so you can fall down on an inside the park home run and still have an inside the park home you run. You can when you're a rookie. That's awesome. Certainly a, a, a home run you'll never forget, let alone your first big league homer. Pops this one back and out of play. You know, I mean, when you would dream about a, a big league home run, especially your first one, it's not an inside the parker. Rick Manning. Inside the parker. Was it Johnny the Masters first one? I think it was. Yeah. Manning's was against the Angels. Mickey Rivers and Dave Collins collided and they knocked each other out. He could have gone around the bases three times. <laughs> Jeez. So it's one and two to Gillespie. Hey, look who got a baseball. Had it played perfectly. Nice. Very good. Away off the glove of Buster Posey. Two balls and two strikes. Well, that's late movement. I mean, Buster Posey really got glove tied there. You catch it web in or web out. Watch his hand get turned around. And this is late movement. And the reaction from Jake Peavy and the dialogue that he has from himself is very entertaining. I mean, he's talking to himself. He's yelling at himself. Arguing with himself. To say that he brings intensity to the game is <laughs> a bit of an understatement. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the Ramirez ground out. Fired up. And this is one right here. It, it just happened on a foul back. He lives on that emotional edge when he's out there. Cranks it up. That's close. So it's three and two to Gillespie. Gillespie has never worn gloves. Does not like the feel of it. I'm watching Gillespie. It looks to me like he's seeing PB pretty good. He's on him, especially that front door sinker and inside corner where he's going in with the two seam fastball. And this next pitch will be number nine. They're going to go away. Well, Monday, August 25th is the KMBR night with Marty Lurie. You need a special event package. 
And uh, you get access to a pregame event with Marty. He's going to interview some guests. A limited edition bobblehead of Marty Lurie and a game ticket. Call 415-972-2298 or visit sfgiants.com slash special events. So here's flowers. Flowers takes a strike. He's faced PB only twice. He's over two, but I'm sure that he's caught PB a few times. And that was just off the plate in the game last night. Flowers took an 0 for 3. And this is hit to panic. Panic to Crawford. Crawford on the run. Side retired. 6-4-3. Santa Ball is going to lead things off. Brought to you by Play Flag Football. Register your child today at playflagfootball.com. Always brings a hearty chuckle every time we see it. Yeah, it just never gets old. <laughs> it's just, I mean, whoever had the idea pulled it off because they're perfect. It's exactly like the rings. Complete replica. Here's Sandoval. Sandoval went one for five last night. The first four hitters in the Giants lineup all went one for five. Here he drives one to right, but it's right at done. One out. Right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, Dwayne and Mike, a quick update for fans on Hector Sanchez, who's been on the disabled list since July 26 with a concussion. Last night, he DH'd for the Fresno Grizzlies, and today he is slated to catch. He'll be evaluated after the game, and then Bruce Bochy said if all goes well, they'll start discussing a date to activate him. Guys? All right, good news. Here's Morris. Morris went one for three. And he takes a strike in its own one. Duvall is on deck. We're in the second inning.
Giants are now seven and nine against the American League, and they got off to such a great start in the interleague. Remember, they swept the Indians, they swept the Twins. I think they had a seven and two going for a while. This is out of play. It's one and two. But the offense that was so easy. At least they made it look easy the first couple months of the season. It's just it's, it's all changed. Now it's hard. Hard to get a guy in base, hard to get a guy in the score position, hard to get a guy in. And Morris chases a one-two pitch and he strikes out. Two outs and the hitter will be Duvall. When you go back and it's always tough when you first at bat to question whether that first pitch is a good pitch. But it turned out in that at bat to Michael Morse the first pitch was the best pitch to hit. And the ball takes down low. He started last night. The ball went one for three. This one back to even the count. Think about Duvall. He does not get cheated. And he will get some well balanced rips off most every at bat. One ball and one strike. And it's Ooh. on the outside corner, one and two. That's in 25th start for Quintana in his, in his first 24. 21 starts of three runs or less. And, and he leads the world in, in no decision since 2012. But amazingly consistent where he keeps his team in the game. That's what Steve Stone was telling us that uh, a lot of people thought that he might have been one of the best kept secrets in the American in the American League. You look at Sale and you look at this guy and you're thinking, what happened? Because the Sox are 57 and 63. Giants saw Bobby Danks in uh, Chicago. He looked pretty good. Very impressed with him. The bullpen has struggled. They have not been able to get a Clear cut rotation into the ninth inning with a consistent closer, and that's really kind of been a big reason as to why they haven't been more successful. And the Giants hit their first base runner, and it's a walk. Nice at that. So here's Panic. Panic went one for four. He actually got robbed on that great play by Beckham in the ninth. But he did something last night that not many left handed hitters do, and that's get a hit off of Chris Sale. And he takes up and in, one ball and no strikes. Well, he had another great at bat in the ninth thing with the bases loaded. He was. Panic that hit the ground ball that Gordon Beckham made it a sensational play on. Wound up being a double play. Looking at bat was solid. Swing. One ball and no strike. It's a 3 1 count to Panic, who rips one up the middle to the backhand of Beckham, and this is just an incredibly athletic double play, and the flip from Beckham. Right on the money as Ramirez comes across the bag. The timing on the play could not have been more perfect. Right there on the inside corner, one and two. And for Joe Panic, just a simple reminder that you're in the big leagues, kid.
So you're saying maybe that's a, a hit in double A? Yeah, good chance. Not that they don't have athletes down there that can't make that play. It's just that up here you see it every minute. Double A baseball, I mean, if you basically sign a professional contract, rookie league A ball, you can play. And a little flare to left, but he's got a hit. And the Giants with their first hit. All right, time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo way. And last night, 2 1 ball game at the emotional double play. Runner at third base, down a run, and Brandon Crawford comes up with the two strikes, swing of the bat that tied the ball game. That is our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. So Flowers is going to go out and have a word with Quintana. Crawford one for three last night. Remember, he got the big hit that tied the game in the ninth inning with two outs. Nice block by Flowers, and it's one ball and no strikes. If if it was just so easy to hit the ball where you wanted to hit it, like, all right, I think I'm going to hit like some balls out to left field today. Well, then maybe a great key would be make Adam Dunn work in right field. Yeah, Adam Dunn. Not a whole lot of range. He's not seen a lot of fly balls this year. And a strike to Crawford to even the count. So that ball in the dirt that Flowers blocked is kind of a good thing. If the ball had gotten by and if both runners advanced, they would have walked Crawford to pitch to Peavy, who's on deck. So the fact that Flowers blocked it and they couldn't advance, probably a good thing. Well, you know, there might be somebody listening saying, well, why don't you walk it anyway? Well, a lot of managers would. And really, it's up to the pitcher to pitch around that eighth place guy. So that's what you're doing anyway. Well, and Quintana knows how to pitch, and I, I think that Robin Ventura knows him quite well. He's handled this situ situation before. And this is a fair ball, and that will end the inning. No runs, a walk, a hit after two. It's nothing, nothing. Prius, and uh, we will.
we'll take a look at some of our happy folks around the ballpark and that could be just about everybody but you throw a camera out on these guys and and uh, they will turn a good day into even a better day. One of our anthem singers when they finished the national anthem this gentleman proposed to her. And uh, the great part of that story is is. They're strangers. <laughs> well, he caught her at the right time. She said yes. And by the way, they nailed the anthem. So here's Jordan Danks. It'll be Danks, Quintana, and then Diaz. Danks is one for three lifetime against. Jake Peavy. Good change up on the 1 0 count. It's always been a strength of Jake Peavy. Good change up, and he gets a lot of ground balls off that change up, too. It's about every pitch he has. When he's down around the knees, he'll put the ball on the ground. And this is lined into center field, a base hit. And that's the first hit for the White Sox is Danks who came in hitting 122 as a board. Jordan Danks with pretty good speed. Giants are going to set the blunt defense up and they'll anticipate a chance at second base. Big disadvantage for the American League that the hitters, the pitchers don't hit, but they also don't bunt. Bunting is not that easy. First pitch is low with the the old schedule, the one three four years ago, where you both leagues boxed all the interleague games at the same time. You could practice. Now the interleague games are spread out all throughout the entire season. If Banks gets back, I guess if you see, you've got. A National League team coming up on the schedule. You can spend a little time bunting. And this is bunted foul. Well, the bunt should go up the first baseline, ideally, but you could say by the speed of that bunt. But had it been fair, Adam Duvall would have had a chance to get Jordan Danks at second base despite his speed. Duvall's got a pretty good arm. So ideally, it should go here with one out. For right handers, I think that's the easiest side to bunt to. And Peavy's got it. He's going to go to second. That's one. He throw to first. Not in time. Nice play by Peavy and Crawford. But well, one thing they didn't tell you about is that Quintana can run a little bit. If he has average speed or normal pitcher speed, he's out by 10 feet. Well, let's take a look at PB coming up. You anticipate with your lower body this lead bag. He does that perfectly. Nice strike. And Crawford knew he had to get rid of that ball quickly. He could see Quintana coming up the, the baseline. But this is where the play gets made right here. And uh, was he indeed safe? You betcha. Barely clipped that bag of his toe. So here's Diaz who bounced out to Duvall. He got jammed on the second pitch of the game. And he takes a strike in his own one. Sandoval in at third. Duvall playing. Close to the bag at first. And Kubi tries to hit the inside corner and misses. It's a ball and a strike. That's by much. You know, with, with a pitcher on first base, I mean, it's not the normal situation where you see a guy like Diaz a bunt, but you still have to respect it. Giants taking it away with Sandoval in on the grass. So, about the time you lay back and say he's not going to bunt is about the time he does bunt. The ball's got it, and that's a double play. 
Peavy's going to lead things off. Nerko on his career winding down. I'm trying not to look at it as a sad occasion. Every player has to go through this stuff. I'm lucky because mine came a lot later than most. I feel lucky for that. And he's had a great career with the White Sox. Originally came up with the Dodger organization. And he really has become a fixture. And take a look at how he ranks on the all time White Sox rank. Total bases first, home run second, RBI second, game second, hits third. He is a guy that has really made the most. Out of his stay in Chicago and the South Side love Paul Canerco. And a lot of people think he'll be a manager someday. So here's Peavy. Peavy 0 for 6 on the season. Plus, Canerco had one of the all time great South Side names for the White Sox fans. To hear them pronounce his name. Hey, Conerco is pitching for the Sox. It's just the greatest thing you ever heard. He was made for the White Sox. It's well worth just going over there. He swinging a foul back. One ball and two strikes. Pagan is on deck. No score here in the Giants half of the third inning. And PV goes around, so he's retired, and that's the second strikeout. Well, Friday, August 27th is Irish Heritage Match presented by Air Lingus. Your special event package will include access to the Irish Heritage Night pregame party, which is awesome. A limited edition Irish Giants hat, which is awesome. And a game ticket, see the Giants take on the Rockies. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Pagan hit the ball sharply his first at bat, right at Beckham at second. Here it looks like he's taking all the way, and he takes the pitch down low. Hunter Pence to follow. And it's two balls and no strikes. And now you can see Pagan indeed taking all the way. It's two and one. I saw a graphic earlier that he's had a little modest seven game hitting streak going. Well, what's impressive is since he's come back off a disabled list, he's gotten a hit in every game. 
Five in a row. Again, he hits this one at Beckham. And he's played in every game. Here's Pence. Mr. Pence popped out in the first inning. Here's the 0 1 to Pence, and Pence takes it in the dirt. I suppose he would hit if Pence reaches. Giants did get a runner in scoring position in the second. But Crawford bounced out to end the inning. One and two. Ninety two mile an hour fastball up across the plate. I tend to see a ball get up between the letters of the belt of Pinch. You're thinking, yes, sir. And that is his kill zone. And that time Quintana, Quintana went right at his strength. And Pence is out swinging to end the inning. John Miller, he'll be in here four, five, and six. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's nothing, nothing. Class hosted by Elmer Cozumar. That's today at 5 p.m. The Blitz. Today's guest, Tim Kawakami, always good from the San Jose Bird. Steve Berman from the Bay Area Sports Guy and Guy Haberman from 95.7 of the game. Uh, the only thing, Kawakami, he just never has an opinion about anything. That's true. Well, Guy Haberman, the same deal. You know, he's going to give you an <laughs> honest opinion. It's no score, top of the fourth. Here's John Miller. And so that's my one suggestion. We'll see if he does it. For Tim Kawakami today, just just have an opinion. Oh, yeah, Don't be afraid to just express your opinion in public. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. It's fun to listen to too. Jake Peavy spins one in there for a called strike to Gordon Beckham. On oh, to the count to Beckham. Beckham hit a foul fly to. Right field that was caught by Hunter Pence in the White Sox bullpen area. His first at bat. And a pop up. Foul. And out of play. Off to the right. Still on two. Each team with one hit. And 
there has not yet been a run scored. White Sox have big hitters coming up after Beckham, though. Abreu on deck, and then Adam Dunn. One and two. Little waist slider. Fish ain't biting. Does set up the inside corner, though. O2, you're heading the count, throw something down and away. Get a guy leaning, come back inside. Just off the outside. Tight little cutter. Look at that outside corner. Next pitch will be number 50 here for PD. Again, one two count. You don't want to throw a strike. You want a guy to go off the zone and try and chase your location. It's a good pitch. Two and two the count. And off the inside, up a little bit. Three and two. So from an 0-2 to a 3-2, and all three times he's gone to corners, Beckham's laid off. But this is one where you got a challenge. You do not want to beat yourself in the stretch to face this guy if you can help it. Certainly not by way of the walk. Shallow right field. There's Duval, and he's called off by Panic. And there is one away. So Jake Peavy once again bringing great stuff into this game, John, and uh, it's just a matter of can they get some runs for him? And this Gordon Beckham, he's looked like an all-star in the two games of this series. And you see the bat he just had there, and you wonder, how is it that he's only hitting 220? Doesn't make sense. Jose Abreu and the Giants have been able to handle him so far, really have contained him. And that curve misses last night. He was 0 for 5, never even had so much as a walk, and he never hit the ball out of the infield. Struck out a couple of times and grounded out three times. He walked his first time today against Jake Peavy. Tied for the major league lead in home runs. Pablo Sandoval. Two down. And this has got to be one of the toughest series that. Abreu's had all year. I mean, that's over his first six with a walk. The Giants have handled him beautifully. But that's not something you brag about us until he leaves town. <laughs> it's only the fourth inning of this game. Adam Dunn now. The Giants immediately go into the overshift for Dunn. Pablo Sandoval, the third baseman, is now the shortstop. Ball one. Dunn struck out. To end the first inning. There you see how they're playing it. And the outfield is really bunched up towards center. That ball is a home run. Just barely. Wow. Just barely by about a, a hundred feet. Home run number 19 for Big Adam Dunn, who has made this ballpark look small in two days. That is the 19th home run for Dunn. It's the third this year that he's hit against the Giants. This is wheelhouse right here. You see how his hands finish high above his shoulder. That's high finish. A guy with high finish has a natural uppercut and that hits the absolute apex of his strength. Wow. That is the first run of the day. One nothing White Sox. White Sox have scored four runs in the series and done with two homers has knocked in three of them. Alexi Ramirez with a count of one and one. Well there was a lot of. Worry about. Manager. Robin Ventura's decision to put Adam Dunn in right field. And it really has not cost him at all him being in right field and he's done exactly what Ventura was hoping he's he's had a couple of home runs they should get him out now right now for defensive purposes <laughs> I was thinking the same thing last after the first inning last night here comes Michael Morris over in the left center and Ramirez is retired and the inning is over but Adam Dunn just hit a monstrous home run and that might have landed in San Francisco Bay before they even heard the crack of the bat out there.
San Francisco Giants and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. Well, this Friday is Filipino Heritage Night presented by at and Your special event package will include access to the Filipino Heritage Night pregame party, a pair of limited edition Filipino Giants texting gloves, and a ticket to see the Giants take on the Phillies. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. And that one is going to go foul down the left field line. Buster Posey grounded out to short his first time with a count of all in one. Buster second at bat here. He's definitely got a, a, an idea of what the movement on the fastball is from Quintana. It's a natural cut, and he'll definitely have a plan. A guy who's got an inside out swing like Posey, it's designed to beat a cut from a lefty. Right center field, Adam Dunn, a long run, still going back into the archway. Buster's going to keep on going around second. Beckham relays to third, not nearly in time. A triple for Buster Posey, his first of the year. And it looked to me like he was going to settle with a double, and all of a sudden he saw that Dunn was having some problems picking it up. And then all of a sudden he takes off. When we talk about the inside-out approach, this is how you beat cut from a lefty. And he finds the gap. And right here, he's got a little bit of a bobble. Talking about Adam Dunn picking it up and watch the route from Posey. And he just about breaks down his feet, thinking, all right, I'm going to take two. And then all of a sudden, boom, I'm going for it. Nice. Fifth triple of Buster Posey's major league career, the first of this season. Now Pablo Sandoval. Right to Beckham. So Pablo who has seen only two pitches today. He lined the first one out to the right fielder and now hits this liner right to the second baseman. And he's not able to get Buster home. So now Michael Morris. Now, I don't know if they'll give the sign to Posey at third base to go on contact on the ground. You've got a really good arms in the middle of the infield with Beckham and, and Ramirez. And you don't have great speed with Posey. His average speed and just ran three bases and eh, maybe even diminished the speed a bit because of that. From the windup. And the curve is back to the screen. 0 and 1. Not fooled on that off speed pitch. He was on it. Good balance. White Sox ahead 1 nothing. Adam Dunn's. Spectacular home run putting the White Sox ahead. And that pop up will go back out of play off to the right. And that cut got right up the bat, and that's what that pitch is designed to do. It's not big movement with the fastball, it's about a three to five inch slide, but it's flat. And if you come out after it as a hitter like Morris, you're thinking, I'm going to barrel this. By the time you get the bat to it, it runs up towards the label. Going to the count. And right there, strike three call. Now let's go down to Amy G. All right, John, Brandon Crawford received a few games off on the last road trip, and I took, talked to him today about how that little break can help him physically with the grind of this game. And he said, physically, it does help. It rests my legs, it rests my arms, but it was more of a mental break. He said he was able to shake off a rough road trip offensively. He said he started to overthink things, and when you're facing major league pitching, you do not have the luxury to overthink anything. Gentlemen. All right, Amy, and the Giants right now are Still trying to get Buster Posey home from third, who got there with nobody out in a swinging strike one by Adam Duvall on that breaking ball. Well, there's pressure in this at bat because of what has happened before Adam Duvall. The line out from Sandoval, the strikeout from Morris. Now the defense relaxes back to its normal positioning. But a base hit here, and all is forgiven. You don't remember the line out, you don't remember the strikeout. A chance here to pick up his teammates. Here comes Adam Dunn, and he gets to it. And the Giants, the second time in two games here against the White Sox, cannot get that runner home from third.
Podcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Sonoma Raceway. The Verizon IndyCar Series returns to Sonoma Raceway on August 22nd to 24th for the GoPro Grand Prix of Sonoma. one nothing White Sox over the Giants as we look at the, uh, the twists and turns of the crookedest street in the world, Lombard Street. And right now the Giants themselves have been twisting into a, a, a downhill slide. It's gone on for a long time. Oh, you're right. A leadoff triple and you face your four, five, six guys, you can't get them in. I mean, that that is an absolute stomach punch to that dugout. And if you're Jake Peavy, who all year long and his teams have had problems scoring runs for him, you gotta think, what do I have to do to get a run? Connor Gillespie, who walked his first time with an 0 2 count. Hitting 3 12 for the White Sox. The pop up, and Brandon Crawford. And there is one away. And, and I thought that was very uh, candid the remarks that Amy G passed on to us from Brandon Crawford about how certainly there were some physical benefits to having a couple of days off there and then the built in day off on the schedule Monday but it was really more of a sort of a, a, a chance to refresh himself mentally reboot in baseball for, for years sometimes they, they and it, it's kind of a, a playful way of putting it you say why why is such, such not playing so well, we're giving him a mental health day Hunter Pence a long run and he gets there and that ball didn't quite end up off the bat of Tyler Flowers where it looked like it was headed. Hunter Pence had to veer off a little bit to his left to finally haul it in. Yeah, I don't think he got as much fly ball as he thought he was going to get. But the good thing about Pence is that even if he doesn't get a great first step, he's got closing speed. And in the end, it makes it easily. Right in the palm of his glove. So two down, and here's Jordan Danks, who singled the center his first time. One of the two hits allowed by Jake Peavy so far. One to nothing. The White Sox are leading fifth inning. Dwayne Kuyper, by the way, if you just tune in, you say, wait, where, where's Kipe? He's on the radio side now. He is on the radio side. I don't know what you guys say on TV. We say on the radio, if he's not there, he's on assignment. Well, we use the same explanation as to why one of our partners are not here. Dave Fleming will be on assignment till next Wednesday at the Little League World Series. One and one the count and it's back to the backstop one and two it gets big ratings too. the games he he's going to be doing maybe he's doing them right now is he is he he's not competing with us is he <laughs> daytime a little late don't even check with that he's not on now it's not on now one and two the count struck him out and that is a very strong inning for Jake Peavy eight pitches and out. Joe Paddock will be coming up. Last of the fifth.
KISS Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Provident Credit Union. Make life easy. one nothing with White Sox. We are in the bottom of the fifth inning. It has been a pitching duel. Jose Quintana, Jake Peavy have locked up. The only run of the game has been a long home run off the bat of Adam Dunn, his second of the series. So Panic, who continues to hit left handers well. He hadn't had that many chances in the big leagues, but he's had eight hits and 17 at bats against lefties. Last night he got a base hit against Chris Sale, who is, has been death on lefties since he's been in the big leagues. He's, uh, he's been no picnic for right-handed hitters for that matter, but particularly lefties he has just destroyed. But Panning had a hit. He singled his first time, just kind of served it through the 5.5 hole over there between third and short. As he takes a strike and it's one or two. We notice now that the shortstop uh, Ramirez he's a little more over toward that hole toward third than he was. Yeah, kind of pinching the five and a half hole here. And you know what it has everything to do with the movement of Quintana's fastball. Quintana's natural movement is going to run away from the lefty into a righty and it's a very difficult fastball for left handers to pull. The natural place to hit it is to the five and a half hole that space between the third baseman and the shortstop and that's why the White Sox have pinched that little spot in the infield they give the line and they give the middle Ooh, strike three called for Quintana if you look at how he's getting people out the month of August the slider has really become alive and that's rare. The slider is usually a pitch you see very healthy in the early part of the year because it takes a little more strength to throw it late in the year. It, 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 it oftentimes will take a vacation, but not for Jose Quintana. The slider has been golden. I guess if you're Quintana, that last pitch, you just say, well, that's a perfect pitch. Absolutely perfect pitch. Crawford. It's it well to left field, but Diaz gets back there quickly. Out number two. You know, Diaz has got center field type range. He got back on that ball with a very good first step. He used to be the White Sox center fielder, so he does cover a lot of ground out there. By the way, we're asking about Dave Fleming. Number one, he said he signed a non-compete clause, <laughs> so no way he'd be competing with us. And number two, he said he's watching right now. Adding to the ratings. So somebody from Comcast get get that out there to the ratings people. They might not count them otherwise. Well, it is different when our four man broadcast team gets reduced to three. And we miss Dave, and we will see him in Chicago for game two of that three game series. Jake Peavy struck out his first time. Two down, nobody on in the fifth inning. The Giants are trailing one to nothing. Jose Quintana, the young lefty, and the changeup off the outside. A ball and a strike. Giants have only two hits a two out single in the second inning by Joe Panic, and the leadoff triple in the fourth inning by Posey. And that's the one that really hurts because they did not get him home. They had. A couple of chances where they wouldn't even have needed necessarily a hit to get him home and just couldn't do it. Uh, and those are the type of innings when you're struggling as an offense that absolutely grinds you down mentally. You can lead off triple. I mean, it's just a matter of when he's in the score, not if. And when you have a pitcher pitch through a lead off triple, that's that's a blow. Two and two the count to Peavy. On help again on deck would be next. Alexi Ramirez have plenty of time and the Giants go down in order. We move to the sixth. Quintana will be coming up then the top of the order against Peavy. One nothing in Chicago.
SFGiants.com slash Candlestick Memories and the Candlestick Park Legends. Both Giants and Niners are autographing some of these historic seats. Paired options include Mays, Montana, Mays and McCovey, Montana and Dwight Clark, McCovey and Will Clark, and others. Again, that's SFGiants.com slash Candlestick Memories. Check it out. You got to have one of one of those or two of those in your house. Here it's one nothing White Sox. We're in the top of the sixth inning. And there's the stick. We all have memories. It's still it's still sitting over there. Last night when I was driving home. The the lights were on over there as if there was a game going on. Here is Quintana. And he takes a call. I wasn't sure why the lights were on, though. Why would the lights have been out of the stick last night? That's uh, uh, rodent control. I thought, well, maybe, maybe they're taking the seats. And there's a foul off to the right. There, oh, there's a concert there tomorrow. Is that the McCartney concert? Well, there you go. That's well, this is doing. the. I want one of those chairs and want McCartney to sign it. <laughs> well, that'd be good. You know, and you and Kite, but. And McCartney, <laughs> and then and then Ringo. I give this. Are the other guys, John and George. I know it's it's sadly too late. So that's your wish. You want McCartney? That would be your wish. Yeah, that's a good one. What is it? Seven hundred forty-nine for a pair. A pair of those seats. Well, that's unsigned. Oh, if they're unsigned. Yes. Oh, oh, it's it's more if they're signed. If they're signed, it's going to cost a little more. Yeah. No, I want I want the the two of them signed by McCartney. For 749. <laughs> well, that's my wish. Well, and throw in the Pope, too. I mean, come on. <laughs> Alejandro de Asa. The Beatles had their final concert ever was at Candlestick Park. And the, uh, the cry, I, I was, uh, I lived in Hayward. I was 14 years old. And I could see Candlestick from my bedroom window. We lived up in the hills in Hayward. And I could see all the, it was, you could always see the lights on them when there was a, a game at night or something was going on at nighttime there. But I could see all the flash bulbs going off. Really? From all the way across the bay like that. Well, it wasn't enclosed then. It was open, right? So you could look right into it? You could look right into it from the East Bay. And I'd see the back of the big scoreboard out there in right field. Chronicle had some cool photos from that final concert, including one showing the, the four Beatles sitting at a table in the middle of the Giants clubhouse. I thought, wow, Mays, McCovey, Cepeda, Marichal, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what a clubhouse that was. All the greats were pinned at the stick in those days, 1966. McCovey, Gaylord, and you Cepeda, Marichal. I mean, was there a better group of people to be the ambassador of baseball to the to the Bay Area when they came up in 1958? I mean, Diaz hits that one hard. Pence will have to play it as it comes out of the fourth archway. And Diaz, who runs well, is into second with a double. Let's go down now to Amy G. All right, John, it's time for our fan photo contest. What do you got? We want to see it. Tweet it to us. Hashtag CSN. Be a fan photo. You gotta include your name or hometown or you are not gonna get on the broadcast. Today's photo comes from Craig Erickson. He's from Chico and he is repping the Giants at the Great Wall of China. Gentlemen, it's official. This contest has gone international. We love it. Guys? Cool. Yeah, that is very cool. So that's the first one for the Great Wall of China? Yes, yeah, first Great Wall we got. Here's Gordon Beckham, runner at second, one out. So these are big pitches now with the Giants already down one nothing. PV throws him a called strike. We got a couple from Stockton Street up in Chinatown, but we haven't got the Great Wall yet. <laughs> got one from the Great Wall restaurant. Oh, and one the count to Beckham, who has fouled out to right and fouled out to the second baseman. And a high fly ball in the shadow left. Morris. Two down. But just to finish on that thought, when, when you think of the of the stars that came to San Francisco with their first big league team in 1958, and that group of players through the decade of the 60s, 
I mean, they, they were pretty great ambassadors for the game. And it's easy to see why this region has fallen in love with the Giants. I mean, the, a lot has to do with it. The, with the pioneers that came in. They got you. They hooked you. Ron Simmons and Russ Hodges. They absolutely did. And, and those were, I mean, Willie Mays was on the short list of the greatest players of all time. And for those who watched him in his prime, I think we'd all make a good argument. The greatest player of all time. Hey. And Abreu not in time. Meanwhile, Deasa thought Abreu was out and he was just wandering around off third base and uh, there was nobody at third base. But Duval immediately, because Deasa had come so far around third, yeah, Duval is. immediately wanted to check him, and then he saw how far off the bag he was, and he started after him, but he had nobody to throw the ball to at first. Comes in, looks up, knows he's got to hurry off the right foot. He's got a good arm, but Abreu, he runs well for a big man. He beats it. He's safe. And give the White Sox another opportunity. You can see Sandoval. Petey sees the opening at third base and he's throwing, throw it, throw it. So the guy who has the home run gets a chance to hit with two men on. Well, it was last night when. Abreu used that surprising speed to keep the inning going in the first inning when Dunn was able to hit the two run homer to put the White Sox ahead for most of the night because well, Abreu was almost doubled up to end the inning. Got an open base here, John. I just don't see him give him a whole lot because Dunn has not been fooled by him. He's been on him, he's been timed the whole game. Now, Deasa will go back to third, but over to second goes Abreu. Now, this is the shot he hit, and what a, an amazing one it was. <laughs> Almost landed into a, a kayak out there. On the wild pitch, the White Sox now have runners at second and third. Now the the first base open. They're going to go ahead and walk down intentionally. There's ball three. And ball four. Now the next guy coming up, Alexi Ramirez. He's not a power hitter, not like Adam Dunn, that's for sure. Although he does have 11 home runs this year, but. Alexi Ramirez came into the game hitting 289, so he's just been a, a good hitter, and this is a spot where he can do a lot of damage with just a base hit. He's also not a guy who walks very often, so we'll see. But this is a, a, a critical moment in the sixth inning. Jake Peavy has thrown 81 pitches for the game, has the bases loaded and two down. Ramirez has grounded out to second and flied out to left center. He is 0 for 2. And right in there for a called strike. I don't understand that. I really don't. You would have thought got like PB with it with the bases loaded, two outs. He's going to get in that strike zone on that first pitch to gain an advantage. Now, ahead in the count 0 1, now he's going to go on the corners. And he took that like he had no intention of, t of swinging at any pitch. And it was a straight fastball challenge. A ball on a strike. And the Giants are going to get the bullpen busy. The right hander, Juan Gutierrez, runs down to the bullpen. Mark Gardner, the bullpen coach, alongside. White Sox already ahead, 1 0. And they have the bases loaded with two down. So tense moments here. Jake Peavy trying to hold the line against a tough hitter. That is foul along the right field line. Well out of play. One ball, two strikes. The big crowd here at AT&T Park. 
Shots are down, but they're right in the game. The White Sox threatening here to open it up in the sixth inning. Connor Gillespie is on deck. Deasa at third, Abreu at second, Dunn at first. And the pop up, panic calling for it, and the inning is over. Jake Peavy gets through. A real tough inning. Still one nothing. Top of the order. Pagan, Pence, Posey coming up. Heffernan Insurance Brokers, offering business and personal insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. Visit us at hefins.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. One to nothing. The Giants are trailing the Chicago White Sox. The top of the order coming up here against Quintana. The Giants have only two hits. The White Sox, you got a home run from Adam Dunn of the fourth for the game's only run. And now Angel Pagan will lead off, followed by Hunter Pence and then Buster Posey. Try and get something going here against Quintana, who's had an excellent year. And the, the Giants know why now, because he's he's been excellent. He's had five strikeouts, one walk, only two hits given up. And the change up for a strike. Well, he's here mixed his location, he's mixed his speeds, his movement beautifully. Pagan has twice grounded out to Gordon Beckham at second base. Look at that. Back to back changeups. I mean, you have 24 starts, and in 21 of those starts, you allow three runs or less. You're having a good year. It blows my mind that the guy is six and eight with those type of efforts in those 24 starts. And that's the year that Quintana has had. And that was a swing and a miss. Pagan said, hey, I found tipped but Chris Siegel said no. And that's six strikeouts now for Quintana. Totally softballed him. Two change-ups and a breaking ball in the dirt. But ahead in the count, 0-2, this is where you want to throw that breaking ball between home plate and the catcher. And Pagan, who has really been pretty good about staying in the strike zone, this time he chases it. Hunter Pence, but it looks like it'll stay in the yard. Deasa, right at the edge of the track. And just got up his bat just a little bit. And that's what a cut will do. He just comes up the bat. If you're a left-handed pitcher throwing a cut to a right-handed hitter, instead of sweet spot, it just gets up towards the label a bit. That's enough to keep it in the yard. And Hunter Pence is 0 for 3. Two down for the Giants. Is that a water taxi? Yeah, well, yeah. Never seen that boat. Kind of looks like a cab, doesn't it? It does. Same color. Checkered. It's like a... 
uh, look kind of like the New York taxi. On one to Buster Posey, who has grounded a short and tripled. He led off the fourth inning with a triple, but the Giants did not score in that inning. And that right now is why they're still trailing by a run. Buster's first triple of the year. And he hit it out into the wide open spaces out there, deep right center. Kind of exploiting Adam Dunn being the right fielder in that case. And so two pitch. Really utilized the two strike count well when he's been ahead 0-2-1-2. Throwing some pretty good teasers. And Giants have having a hard time laying off those pitches. Out of play. One and two. Dwayne Kyber will be coming back, by the way, for the seventh inning. From his uh, assignment. Wind blowing out toward left, and it is picked up. Could get a push on the ball to left. And fastball down and in. Two and two to Buster Posey. Quintana came into this game with a 3.04 earned run average, which in the American League, the designated hitter league, and in that ballpark where the ball tends to carry well, just an excellent earned run average. Struck him out. And he has seven strikeouts in six innings. Drake Kyber coming back for the seventh. The Giants are trailing one to nothing. Summary is brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. And here it is through 6 4. White Sox, one run, four hits, no errors. Giants, no runs, two hits, no errors. Jose Quintana, Jake Peavy, lock and horns. A beautifully pitched ball game, but one mistake, a solo shot by Adam Dunn in the fourth. And that has been the offense in this ball game. That is your Toyota game summary. Jake Peavy set now to face Connor Gillespie as the White Sox take their hacks here at the top of the seventh. And joining us again on play by play, here is Dwayne Kuyper. All right, thanks, Mike. And indeed, Gillespie. Followed by Flowers and then Dinks. And it's another and two. Had good swings, Gillespie. He's got a good swing. He's always had a good swing. It's not a home run swing. And for a corner infielder, I mean, for the most part, they want you to bang. They want you to hit double digit home runs. It's not the type of hitter that Gillespie is, but he's a tough guy to strike out. He's a gap to gap hitter, use the middle of the field. 
and he's a tough guy to get off balance. Hit out to Pagan in center field. Lots of acreage out there. RBI baseball is back with all 30 MLB teams and 2014 players get the retro two button style baseball game that you have been missing. Visit RBI game.com for more details download today on your console or mobile device. Here's flowers flowers is hit into a double play and he's popped out to pins. And he looks at a strike. Nice first pitch curveball. Posey and PB have hooked up. And this is only the fourth start that PB has had. And he thought these guys have played years together the way that they synchronize pitcher catcher. They work well together. Yes, they do. Tanks is on deck. Those are close. But that's how you take advantage of an 0-1. You go out there and you shave the zone. Set that target wide. Just miss the strike zone by about the width of a ball and a half. So Flowers works it to three and one. <laughs> he gets so angry. A two one count miss with it. Now he's not happy with himself. And that never dims. That intensity has been that way since he stepped onto the field for the first time as a big leaguer as a Padre 11 years ago. Well, he gets Flowers to fish. It's three and two. And the payoff pitch. Here it is. And this is hit to Joe Panic. You see the numbers for PV when you when he wore that White Sox uniform. 36 and 29. Good ERA in 2012. Won a gold glove. Here's Danks. And Danks takes a pitch down low, one ball and no strikes. You know, PB's one of those guys, too. You say, How'd you like playing in Chicago? How'd you like playing in Boston? How'd you like playing in, in Barstow? He's going to tell you, I loved it. It was fantastic. And he's going to mean it because he does find joy when he gets between the lines. Now, granted, he's been with some pretty good cities San Diego, Chicago, Boston, and now San Francisco, but he's just one of those upbeat guys that loves the yard. He's a backyard boy. He is marching towards pitch number 100. Jeremy Athel starting to get heated up. And that's down low. It's two and two. Both teams will have a day off tomorrow. The Phillies will be in town on Friday night. The two two is down low, three and two. So PB's been trying to get Danks to fish, and he's not. And the payoff pitch to Danks is rolled over to Duvall. Duvall to Peavy. Side retired. So maybe Peavy's 
last inning. It'd be nice if the Giants could get him the lead. It's one nothing Chicago. One nothing Chicago. Time to log on to CSNBarea.com and decide the player of the game. Winner will be revealed during Giants post game live. You can check out the enhanced Bloomberg stats and more Giants in game live on CSNBarea.com. Log on and vote. Here's Sandoval. It'll be Sandoval, Morrison, Duvall. Seventh inning. Quintana is at 72 pitches, so he is absolutely good to go. Now I think the White Sox want to stay out of their bullpen if they can. If they can do that, and have had problems in that bullpen. It happened again last night after eight incredible innings by Chris Sell. The bullpen gave it up. Giants tied to score 2-2 two -two late. Robin Ventura. Sandoval is lined out to right, then hit a soft line drive to second. Only six hits in the game. This has popped out of play, and one of the four hits for the White Sox, if you just joined us, ended up in the pond, and that was the home run by Adam Dunn. Quintana has really done a good job of getting Giants off their back leg. Watch the reach and the swing. I mean, once you get a, a hitter to do that, you've taken away his power. And Quintana has been masterful at doing that today. Hit into center field, and uh, right there is Banks, one out. And now to bring up Michael Moore. I mean, I mean, a lot of people think a perfect game would be 27 strikeouts. But big league pitchers don't think that way. They think just take the sting out of somebody. The bat, the perfect game would be you know, 27 pitches, 27 first pitch outs, and all of them to hit with really not a lot of lower body into it. I mean that's the perfect game. Upsetting the timing. That is what a pitcher does. Hitters, it's all about timing. And Banks and, and Quintana has done that today. This is a little flare in the center field, and that's going to fall. The Morris picks up a base hit. And that'll bring up Adam Duvall. Your offense is cold. The hardest thing to be if you're a manager is patient. 
Take a look at the base hit. Michael Morris with one out. Right off the end of the bat, using the middle of the field. So Barco's going to pinch run. And here's Duvall. The ball has walked and he's flied out to right. And the pitch to Duvall and Duvall flares one to right. And that's going to be a hit. Blanco is going to challenge Beckham and Beckham won't throw. Nice base running. So we're going to make it our fourth right choice. Second time the Giants have put a runner at third base. And for Adam Duvall, he gets a little cut fastball. It goes up the bat, but he fights it off. It just doinks it into right field. But the play really was made by Gregor Blanco, who identifies it's not going to get caught, but identifies that he ain't going to get me. Bit of a risk, you cannot get thrown out there. Not a one nothing ball game, but he makes it easily standing up. That's our Ford right choice. And just like that, the White Sox are getting their bullpen going. Ronald Belisario. Starting to get heated up. Remember Belisario when he wore the Dodger uniform? Still looks like a guy you don't want to hit off of. Just by the way he wears his hat. So Robin Ventura is going to come out now. It's nice to see Robin. We didn't see much of him last night. He's saying, "Get me a run or two or ten. Right now, just give me one." PD was fantastic today. Panic is going to hit. He singled in the second. And then he got caught looking in the fifth. You got good speed at third base with Blanco. Pretty good speed at first base with Duvall. You got a great arm in left field with Diaz. Average arm in center, average arm in right. And Panic is not a. A regular squeeze looked more like he was trying to bunt for a hit. Well, Quintana, left hander, is going to have his momentum come over to third base line, so the bunt should go this way if you're going to do it. Well, now it's 0 1. Tried to hit that outside corner and missed. One ball and one strike. He, he did not miss by much. We've seen that pitch called a strike early in the game. Blanco at third. Duvall at first. On the ground. Coming home is Blanco. And they got him. And a nice play by Abreu. And that play will go 3 2. Just a big league jam shot. Play right in front of Abreu with Blanco going on contact. I don't know if he ever did touch. Base with his lower body. He may have touched it with his hands and stood by. But by then it was too late. You know what, Dave? Bruce Boach, you may want to look at this to see if he was blocking the plate. And he's gonna. Because he was blocking the plate. This could be very interesting.
I mean there really was no lane. This replay review is presented by Xfinity. Now you can get in the lane once you have the ball, right. but if you don't have the ball, you can't get in that lane. And that's going to be the question. And look where he was. I mean, he's planted without the ball. Blanco has to swing wide. There's no lane for him. And an easy tag by Flowers. But it, we have seen this call. Well, no. I, look, if you're gonna if you're gonna go by by the rule, then this very much could be overturned. And uh, I, I guarantee you this: if Bruce Bochy, and I don't have any idea if he's got access to see this, if this. Isn't overturned, then he's going to wonder why. Uh, he's completely sealed off before he had the ball. And there have been precedents set in baseball with this very call where we've seen it overturned. And they're taking a long look, and I'm sure there's some debate in New York as to how they're going to rule this. Stepped up, sealed off the plate. There is, I mean, it's completely blocked. You see the leg go down right there. I'd say there's about a 30% chance they're going to overrule. I don't know, Mike. And they are definitely taking a look at it from every possible angle. Yeah, through Sunday, this is the season summary of what's going on with the replays. See, almost 50% overturned. And remember, the luxury of getting a look at it in the clubhouse is going to make a lot of those overturned. But. Uh, the longer they take a look at this, the more you are led to believe that they are taking this very serious. I think the longer it goes, the better it looks for the Giants. Yeah, I do too. See where he comes up. I mean, he just seals it off. That plate is sealed off. He did not have the ball. Really, I mean, Blanco could have blown him up. Absolutely. And, you know, that's the one thing you're trying to avoid. And base runners now are going to take that route if it's given to them. If they overrule this, Robin Ventura is going to lose his mind. Well, somebody is. You're right. And you also notice that this one is not being shown on the screen either. It is not. Now, this is one of the longest we've seen all year. Ever. And now we're hearing fans in front of us. You know, they're getting a little anxious as to wanting to know the outcome of this. And in a lot of ways, I don't blame them. If you're wondering, is it really busy in New York? Well, there's one other game going on right now, and that's the Indians and the Diamondbacks. So this has got everybody's full attention. Well, there's a long dialogue going on with Field and Colbert, the, the crew chief on the left side. And there's a big time conversation. So here we go. Safe. And here comes Ventura. And 
this game is tied. You know, the one thing that Ventura would like to do is just grab the headset. Do you think they kicked him out, or do you think this is just for fun? Well, I think it was pretty predictable. I, I haven't seen this kick him out yet. I, I don't blame him. I mean, once he, he argues at all, they're going to kick him out. And finally, the Giants scratch a run. And not only that, but they get another first and third with one out. Maybe Ventura will come out for this one, too. Yep, here he comes. You know, a lot of that conversation, Mike, I bet, was where do you place the runner? And that's why it took so long. Well, Chris Siegel, Siegel is basically saying, you know what, I'm, I'm giving you the ruling that was decided in New York. It really is out of my hands. And now Ventura's going back to the crew chief and going, wait a second, you're telling me he's going to be on third base too? You're killing me. So, and they're going to go look again. Here's what's interesting is Joe Panic gets an RBI. Well, right now, Jake Peavy does not care. I don't know that he got tossed. I, I never saw the thumb. Yeah, I think it's all about Yeah, he did. All right, right when he comes out, you see that it was kind of a... There it is. That's a soft toss right there. And I think Fielding Cobras could sort of commiserate with Ventura, which is why he wasn't that animated with his see you later call. But now they're going to go back and discuss exactly where the runner should be. So what I said earlier about them taking a lot of time maybe to place the runners, I'm going to retract that. And they had to have anticipated this in New York, so this would be fairly quick. No, they're going to bring him back to second. Yeah, one more time. And you can see as they pull back from our high home, Duvall is at second base right there. So to give him third would have been a bit of a stretch. But the Giants get what they want. The White Sox are stunned. Unless he possesses the ball, a catcher cannot block the path of a runner attempting to score. In such cases, the runner will be declared safe, with one exception. A catcher may block a runner's path in order to field a throw, but only if the umpire judges the throw to be otherwise unplayable and the contact unavoidable. So clearly, Flowers in violation of the rule as he set up and you can see how Blanco had to swing out And really the one thing that really gets back to why they had the rule Blanco could have absolutely blown him up And that's what they wanted to avoid. So here's Crawford And Crawford chases a breaking ball in its own one I can't even find it in in my mind to say good at bat for panic. <laughs> Make contact. And Crawford with a half swing. It's nothing at two. Joaquin Arias has grabbed a bat. He's on deck. The chance now for PV to get. A decision is going to come with the Crawford and Arias at bat. Well, I'm happy for Jake Peavy. He got that run to tie it. 
blocked by Flowers. He became into this game with a 1 and 12 record, having 12 losses in a row. A lot of the losses that he's had, he's pitched as well as he has pitched today. And if they don't get that run, I mean, he goes out of here trailing and has the possibility of getting another loss, but not now. And now he has a chance to get a win. One ball and two strikes to Crawford. Two and two. He made Crawford look bad on one of those breaking balls, and now he's going to try to see if he can get Crawford to chase again, and so far he hasn't. Two balls, two strikes. And Crawford hits one into center field. And it's the uh, or Danks that goes back to make the catch, and the ball will tag and go to third. So here's Arias. Arias pinched hit in the game last night and went 0 for 1. If you think about that, it's odd, and I'm sure Ventura is thinking the same thing. Morris hit one off the end of the bat, it broke his bat, he sent it. The ball broke his bat on a flare to right. First and third. Panic broke his bat and Blanca was thrown out at home. Not. Tie score. Tie game. Well, if Arias can get a clean single here, the Giants would take the lead. And he takes low. One ball and no strikes. Or a wild pitch or a pass ball. It has to take any of that. As hard as it as it has been for the Giants offense to score runs <laughs> they'll take anything anything. And the one out to Arias is high two balls and no strikes. You know, the, the thing about the play if you go back and look at I, I don't know how flowers could have played any different I guess he could have got out in front of home plate a little yeah. bit and it's what Buster does. But he was late to get to where he was. I mean, he didn't break immediately to get to the position that he was in. Plus, you know, a catcher's instinct is just getting the position because he's watching the, the play. He's not watching where the location of the play is. So it's 3 0 to Arias. And that's not close. This is the play last night. And Posey gave him a lane there, a little more room. And we're talking about 12 to 15 inches. There was a lane there. That play was not contested, and the Giants got the out. The play today was so a bit we're, different. We're going to get a new pitcher when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and break experts.
bases loaded. And there's your new pitcher. Ronald Belisario coming in for the 40th time for the White Sox. 4 and 8 with a 6 0 ADRA. Hard to believe this guy's got a 6 0 ADRA. At one point this year, he was the closer for the White Sox. When he's on, you're going to see a sinking fastball that goes low to, to high 90s. I mean, he's got a great arm, and I don't think he can throw the ball straight. Hard slider, and he's got a split. Leary Garcia goes to center field. And he will hit in the ninth spot on the double switch. Pagan is one for six lifetime against Belisario. Two outs, bases are loaded. One ball and no strikes. He can throw hard. He's got a lot of movement. And he can also throw one to the backstop. See what Pagan has done with the bases loaded. Very good numbers. A 1 1 ball game. And a base hit to left field. The ball scores. Here's the throw home. Cut off. Panic scores. And the Giants take the lead. How about that? Well, you saw the lifetime success. And one of the reasons for it is Pagan has always been a guy that will go with the movement. And this is not a hanger for Belisario. It's mid 96 on the knees away to try and pull it. The innings over. And look what he does. He pokes it into left field. That is a thing of beauty. And Jake Peavy's got to leave. And that's our fourth thing of beauty this year. Rob Matura's got to feel like he's getting whipped to death with a wet spaghetti noodle. Guys don't care. First time this series, they've led. Hunter Pence takes high. He's one for 11 with five strikeouts against Belisario. Here's the day for PB, a solid outing, seven strong, four hits allowed, three walks, one earned run, three punch outs, and even 100 pitches. <laughs> Two and out of Pence. Pence back up the middle in a base hit. Here comes Arias. He's going to score, and it's four to one. Belisario just got a piece of it. A high hanger. That's the area that Hunter Pence defends so well. Right back up the middle, and you're right. He just got a piece. And with that, it gave Garcia no chance to get a throw off to get Joaquin Arias. Now Bobby Figpin's going to come out and talk to Belisario. Well, the... Interesting numbers for Buster Posey against Belisario. You probably remember this. He's one for 12 lifetime. The one hit, I believe it was a walk off. Bobby Piero, the right hander, heating up for the Sox. Well, if you're only going to get one hit, 12 at bats, make it a walk off big fly. Absolutely. So Buster Posey is one for three today. And the first pitch is high. It's one and oh. Sit to left field. Here comes Pagan. The eyes has got it. 
His throw is a good one, not in time. And it's five to one. That's three straight, two out base hits for the Giants. And for the Giants fans, they've been waiting a while to do this. He has to feel almost therapeutic. And it looks like that's going to be it for Belisario, who didn't retire anybody. We are going to take a break. Giants lead 5-1. All five runs here in the seventh. Javi Gear, the new pitcher now for the White Sox. Mark Parent, the bench coach, making the change. 29th time that he has come in. One and three with a 3 2 3 ERA. Remember, once upon a time, he was the closer for the Dodgers. He's got good stuff. He's got mid 90s gas, two and four seam it. He'll cut it, throw a curveball, slider, change up. He's got them all. Doesn't have great command. And Sandoval on the first pitch hits one out into right center field. And it's dropped. It's dropped, and Pence is going to score. And Posey's going to score. And Sandoval to third. And it's official. The wheels have fallen off. Garcia just into the game. And Dunn doesn't play much in the outfield. Well, we saw it. Garcia's a little guy. And. You watch the path of both outfielders, and you're thinking, if they collide, Garcia's in trouble. And it almost was a collision. And Dunn, who plays probably four games in the outfield a year, is a DH coming over, and there's the collision with the gloves, thankfully, and not with the bodies. But you're right, the wheels have come off. It'll be an error on one of those two. And the pitch is high to Blanco. Give the air to Dunn. Blanco came in as a pinch runner. He'll not get to hit. He ran for Morris in the in this inning. Sandoval at third. And a high fastball is 2 0. <laughs> Down the right field line, this is going to be foul. Nice catch.
seven runs seventh inning most runs in inning this season. The scoreboard operators just not used to that many runs. Three and one now to Blanco. Well maybe they ought to get into practice. How about that? Well, that's fine with me. Blanco lifts this one out to Diaz and left. And Diaz battling the sun and he'll make the kick with that in the inning. Maybe that's the play of the game, which was reversed. Robin Ventura got kicked out in a lot of ways. We don't blame him. 7 1 Giants. The one on the left last night, the one on the right tonight. Uh, you can see a little bit of a lane here for Posey, and there's no lane with Flowers, and that's the difference in the interpretation of the rule. You have to give a lane. If you don't have the ball, you cannot get in the way, and uh, it's simple violation, and it, it costs the the White Sox big time. So there's Jeremy Affel. 47th time that Affield has come in, 2 and 1, 1.73 ERA, trying to preserve this for Jake Peavy, who was absolutely outstanding today. Blanco stays in the game. He's in left field. Michael Morris is out. One ball and one strike. That's a nice finish right there. Oh, they got that at Whole Foods. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, I don't know. They get the rods out. Well, <laughs> that'd be the greatest deke of all time. Salmon, cut that bad boy up. Yeah, I'm yeah. in on that. He's got a price tag on it. Have me for dinner. We have that McCovey Cove tilapia every Friday night here. Yeah. <laughs> Press room loves it. In the dirt, two and two. Yeah, I can't hang with the tilapia. I know, I know, you're not a tilapia guy, but when it comes from right here in the cold, you got to at least give it a shot. Yeah, if you invite me for dinner and you have eggplant and tilapia, I'm going to fake like I'm sick and have to go home. Other than that, I'm good. Out of play. Anchovies? Absolutely. You all right. Yeah. Caesar salad with some anchovies? Absolutely. Yeah. Me too. And I you've talked me out of tilapia, but I am a mushroom guy. So. Oh yeah. Mushrooms, good for you. Crawford will charge and get a big hop. 
see you retired. They're telling us that the reviews, when they went to New York, the first review was four minutes and 55 seconds. And the second one was a minute. So undoubtedly, the, the discussion was something they weighed heavily in. It's a play that is controversial. It is a play that is designed to protect the catcher, and, and it really did exactly what it's supposed to well, do. In a lot of ways, protect the runner, too. Yeah. But Robin Ventura reacted exactly how we would have reacted if we were the opposing manager. And it's really a tough play for a catcher. Look out on the breaking ball. Yeah. Mike Redmond had the same reaction when literally the same thing happened to the Marlins. Well, it's really going to take a, a few years before players, uh, catchers, are going to be comfortable with it. I mean, this generation catcher, their whole life has been blocking the plate. Now, all of a sudden, they're being asked to do something that what they're unaccustomed to doing. Remember, Buster Posey got a head start on all these catchers because he started to do it the very year after he was injured, and he was instructed to do it. 2012 became the Giants' policy throughout the minor leagues. Apfel steers it. A soft toss. And here's Beckham. Beckham is 0 for 3. This is the eighth inning. And this is lined in the right field. So Beckham with his first hit. And that'll bring up Abreu. We're almost ready to go. So we'll see what Bruce Bochy's thinking. Maybe that he'll save Romo for the ninth. Abreu had an infield hit in the sixth. He's one for two. So Beckham at first with two outs. And this is high and away. It's two and zero. Oh. Adam Dunn is on deck. With Dunn, you realize that you want to keep people off the bases because with Dunn, one swing of the bat, one mistake, and all of a sudden now you got a game again. Well, you're right. I mean, they're explosive. They got some firepower. And when you're trying to turn around a five-game losing streak, I mean, you you got to play like it's a two-one ball game. So Abreu just a little tardy on the 2 0 pitch. It's two balls and one strike. Yeah. 
two and two. So Affel about to throw pitch number 18 here in the eighth as he steps off. Well, this isn't just any other bat either. When you're facing a guy who's having the kind of year that Brady's having, I know it's a six run lead, but still it's mono a mono here when you get a guy putting up the numbers of Brady has. And this will be hit right back to Jeremy Affel and that end the inning. <laughs> to the bottom of the eighth. And the ball is going to leave things off. of the eighth inning when it's time for a change think speedy oil change and auto service your oil change tune up and brake experts the pitcher now for the White Sox to be Matt Lindstrom who just got activated off the disabled list had an ankle problem when he's right he's another hard thrower two and one with a three three two ERA not a lot of work this year at one point he was the closer be one of the hardest throwers in the league. Now he's backed off some of that fastball. Fastball slider split. Been having a hard time staying healthy this year. The ball one for two. Turns on this one and pops it foul down the left field line and out of play. One and one to Adam Duvall. A one and two. And it's down low. The Giants will get. Cole Hamels on Friday. They'll get Sandy Koufax on Saturday. <laughs> They've seen some quality left-handers, no doubt. Oh, my goodness. Well, and when you're struggling to score runs, I mean, everybody is Sandy Koufax. And yeah, Randy Johnson it will pitch on Sunday. Yep. 
And the ball is out swinging. Good slider. Check out our McDonald's two stories on this date in 2004. The Giants powered their way back to a 16 to 6 victory over the Phillies in their first game at Citizens Bank Park. JT Snow, he faced the offensive attack. What did he do? He had three home runs in the game. Way to go, JT. Love to see those highlights. So here's Panic. Joe Panic takes down low. His seventh RBI in the big leagues, very disputed one. But knocked in the tying run, which was Gregor Blanco in the seventh inning, overturned by the folks in New York after Blanco was thrown out at home. Two balls and no strikes. Did he go around? He did not. It's three and zero. Oh. Crawford on deck. Three and one. Forty one thousand seven hundred and twenty five. Giants fans love their day baseball midweek. And it rolls this one to Beckham. All right time now for our Honda player of the game. No doubt about this one today. Jake Peavy has really come into a tough situation here. Giants had lost five in a row. He lost 12 in a row and now he stands to be the pitcher of record in a positive way. You can see him celebrating, cheering his teammates on, and it, when it all was over, he threw seven solid innings, four hits allowed, one run. And when this was overruled, he was psyched. And you can't blame him. They have not supported him with runs often this year. He is our Honda player of the game. Nobody has. Crawford takes a strike. Crawford has bounced out and he's flied out twice. And he taps this one off his foot. It's nothing in two. So Yoroma will pitch the ninth. Travis Ishikawa's on deck. And that breaking ball is popped back and out of play. And two. Look out. Right in on the hands. Crawford is out and that'll end the inning. So we'll go to the ninth. Adam Dunn is going to lead things off. 7 1 Giants.
with seven runs in the seventh inning. They lead 7-1. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change in auto service. Your oil change tune-up and brake experts. It's good numbers for Sergio Romo coming in to try and close this one out. And Panic throws him out, and that will go 9-3. <laughs> well, it looked like it. Stay tuned for the post-game wrap. That's going to come up in just a little bit. And also talk about the game with Murph and Mac tomorrow morning on KMBR 680. Murph is here today. Ishikawa now at first. Murph brought along a couple of the interns from the morning show. I thought he looked pretty chipper for a guy that gets up at 3.30 in the morning. Who has no sleep? There's a strike at the knees to Alexi Ramirez. So I'm giving this this game the outcome which we think is going to be a win. I'm giving Murph full credit. Okay. Why? Just for showing up? Yep. Jeez. He showed up in Kansas City. Yep. Yep, he did. So he needed a redeemer is what he needed. <laughs> One ball and one strike to Ramirez. And he skies this one out into center field. Two outs. And here's Gillespie. Think about all the, the little bounces that have kind of gone against the Giants in this five game losing streak. Well, today they got a break. And to their credit, they crashed through the door. And that pitch is down low. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, that's baseball. It will humble you, it'll excite you. It's going good. You can't wait to get to the yard when it's going bad. It's the longest period of your life. So it's 2 0 to Connor Gillespie. 0 for 2 through a walk in the second. And this is rolled foul. Jones trying to inch closer to that 500 mark at home. Outside corner, and it's two and two. Wrap that little no doubt slider around that outside corner. That's a strike away from ending this five game losing streak. Two and two. Here it is to Gillespie. And it's down low. Three balls and two strikes. Could you change it? If Gillespie reaches its flowers, he's on deck. the ball game. So the Giants needed a win and they needed Jake Peavy to get a win. 
And both happened here at at and Park. Well, PV was fantastic, and uh, for most of the day, I mean, it was a one-nothing ball game until the bottom of the seventh, when he had come out of the ball game after going strong seven, and they absolutely busted through the door to get him this victory. A small break, they took advantage of it, and this is a much, much needed victory. Final score: the Giants seven and the White Sox one. Easter and Giants post game live with interviews in the wrap. That's all coming up. But first, let's go to the Sports Central Studios. 